guys. Yes, I still have not got a microphone to cut out drive noise. I have to get on that. I, I don't even know. Right, I'm going to have to get on it somehow. So, it is a new weekly vlog. It is Tuesday. I'm going where I usually go on a Tuesday. I didn't go last week because <coughs> I wasn't well. You can probably still hear that I still have the virus. Um, I'm going to drop off some shopping for my mum. My mum like gets really lonely when if I'm not well and I can't get in. So to make it after reaching it. Right, that's the radio switching on by itself. What that is is for some reason up where we live doesn't pick up DAB radio until it gets to this point. So um, Darren was obviously listening to the radio. I always switch off. I don't know why everything stereo lights when. When white window wipers and when I get in and put the car on and darn to me and the window wipers will come on, the, the lights come on, and just everything. Um, my seat's nice and toasty. I'm using my seat warmer and it's very nice, I have to say. It's good for a bad back. I get a really, really bad lower back and it's actually nice. So yeah, I'm dropping in some shopping to my mum. I'll sort of be sitting either with a mask or like, I sit across the room from her anyway, but I don't want to get too close. Um, it's only a, a virus. In saying that, it's a bloody nasty virus. But, um, it's not COVID. I have been testing throughout, you know, being at home, and it's definitely not COVID. I stockpiled the lateral flow tests when they were free. Um, I ordered them really regularly. So I've, I've got quite a few boxes, I'd say quite a few, not loads, but I, I got some so that my parents and us would have um, <clears throat> lateral flow tests so we can still test. So um, I think there's people out and about all over the place that have it, no idea they have it or don't really care if they have it. So, um, but like I always say, I have to be very careful with my parents and their health because a really bad bite of COVID, I mean, Isaac's had it three times since the pandemic started. Me and Darren have had it twice. But the first time that we had it was shocking. It was so bad. Just turning off the seat over. Um, it was completely unlike the other times. The other times were manageable, but that first time was just a complete and utter nightmare. Um, and I, w I wouldn't want to think of my parents being hit with that one. It was shocking. It was right at the beginning of the pandemic. Friday, it's meant to be Scouts, but Robert's big sister turns 18. And the siblings have been told they can bring, you know, a couple of friends. So Robert's bringing Isaac. She actually did ask us <coughs> if we wanted to go. Now, <coughs> point one, I really don't want to be infringing in people's, like, birthday things. It's like all family apart from a few friends what it is is because we had Robert up a lot and we took him out and we take them to scouts every week I think they're trying to keep us sweet it's like oh yeah you do so much for us you know you and Darren are invited as well now I would not be surprised if we were invited and we got there and we had to pay for our own food because when Robert had a birthday, and if you've had kids' birthday parties, you'll know all this. They, um, there are only two of them invited, and she said, um, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to have, um, they did like indoor go-karting. Well, they're, well, they're having half an hour of the go-karting, and then we're having a picnic. And I'm like, all right, that sounds awesome. And I said, anything you want me to bring? No, no, there's nothing, uh, you know, that's fine. We're having a picnic after. When Darren and Isaac got there, she looked at them and said, what, have you not got any food? Have you not got a picnic? And Darren says, what? Now, I had asked her, do you want me to bring anything? And she'd said no. But when she said to me, we're having a picnic, she had assumed that I would know that meant we were to bring food. Now, to me, if you are having your child's birthday, you provide the food for everyone. You don't, I'm happy to bring stuff if they told me to bring stuff but when she said we're doing this and then we're having a picnic I assumed she was providing the food but she didn't so her inviting us to this thing 
which apparently is food and music, I don't know, somewhere in a village like about 20 miles away. Um, what would happen is we would go there and end up having to pay expensive money that we can't afford to pay. You know, me and Darren don't really go out to eat anymore, but we don't, can't afford to. Um, so last week, I'll let you into a secret, last week, I got the dates wrong, I thought it was last weekend. And I said to Darren when I was well, a couple of weeks before it, I said, oh Jesus, I really don't want to go. But it's going to be really, because this woman's one of my mum's carers, this will teach you about telling lies. I'm terrible at telling lies. She knows where I am and what I'm doing all the time because she's one of my mum's carers. So I says to Darren, oh, I'm going to pretend to be sick. And, and then we'll not have to go. I says, you can still take Isaac and drop him off, but if, if I've got a virus, then... And what happened? I got the wrong weekend, and then I ended up getting a virus. <coughs> <coughs> so, lesson, do not pretend you're sick. Because I actually did try and, like, graciously refuse the invitation. But over here, you can't do oh, all of nonsense. You'll come, you'll come. He can't graciously decline anything and I can't afford to go and you know it's I just would feel awkward around people I don't know. Um so then I got sick. So it's my own bloody fault for telling a lie that I had a vibe. Ooh, that bird nearly flew into the car. Um Does anyone else duck when a bird flies at their car windscreen or is that just me? Darren thinks it's hilarious that every time an engine comes towards my car windscreen I duck. Um, so yeah, as I said, this is the first time I've been out since, not Friday past, but Friday before, when I went to see Poltergeist, <coughs> um, and I felt rough as a badger's backside. Um, I still really should not be out, I still don't feel very good, I've had to put a slap of makeup on my face so I don't look like death warmed up, um, but I need it to get in to check my mum's okay and bring this shopping in and like when it comes to social things absolutely not no way am I up to anything social right now so coincidentally this thing's on Friday which is three days time and I have a virus I'm not telling lies I'm actually sick but one thing that really aggro sorry for all this talking folks is I'm catching up since last week this will give you an idea why I get frustrated I um, took really bad migraines in the middle of this virus and I was going to bed in the evening like 7 o'clock um, just couldn't cope with setting up and the light and the TV and stuff so I went to bed and one of the days Robert was at our house with Isaac and she said oh I'm in the next village over do you want me to collect Robert on the way home and I said back yeah that's fine Darren was going to leave him up soon if you want to call for him that's fine I'm, I've went to, I'm in my bed basically Darren will leave him out, you know, Darren will take him out. Wanting to explain to her why I'm not going to the door so she doesn't think I'm an ignorant guy. Um, and I told, she says, oh, you're alright, you what's, I said, oh, but really, really nasty virus. I said, it's knocked me completely on my arse. Um, I haven't been well for, for over a week. So that was last Thursday. Friday, the next day, it was Thursday past. The next day was Friday, which is a Scouts Day. Now, I knew that they weren't at Scouts because they were off for Halloween. And she knew that they were off for Halloween because when I sent her an email to tell her the week prior that they were off for two weeks, oh yeah, I just asked Kayla, she confirmed that's right. She sent me a text on the Friday, the day after I told her I was in bed with this virus that I'd had for over a week and it knocked me completely on my arse. This is the same person that said, after my husband has done his black belt and got his black belt, we'll pull our fair share of, t you know, taking the kids to to, to scouts. Um, now, she sent me a text on the Friday. Are you okay to take the kids to scouts or do you want Benny to do it? Number one, is that how you make the offer to actually start doing your bit? Or do you say... You guys do it every week. Benny's going to do it this week. He'll pick them up at this time. Or do you say, are you okay to take them or do you want Benny to take them? Because she knows the type of person I am is not going to say, well, yeah, get Benny to take them. But as it stands, they weren't going to Scouts. And I says, but I had this conversation with her a few days ago. She knows that Scouts isn't on. 
Right, I've been talking to I don't know how long that's been pointing the wrong way, so I do apologise. Doran says, don't you know what she's doing? And I says, I've no idea what she's doing. And Doran says, well, she's obviously offering for him to take the kids on the two weeks that she knows that it's not on, so that she's offered. And I'm like, ah, oh, right, okay. So um, she said she was going to pull her own weight. She was going to get him to help out. It's been a year that I've been taking them every week. Um, she's offered the two weeks that it's not on. And it was a case of, can you do it or do you want? And she knew how ill I was and she still said, can you take them? So have I any desire to go to this birthday thing? No. But the invite means I have to buy something for her 18th, her daughter, who I've never met incidentally. I don't know her. Isaac's just friends with Robert. So now I'm forced into a position of needing to buy a gift for someone. It's like, oh, for God's sake. And on the Saturday, the day after this thing, on the Friday night, um, <clears throat> one of Isaac's friends is having a birthday thing at the cinema. So I have to buy a present for him too. It's like, oh God, I can't afford this. Um, but yeah, and the what did I tell you about? Oh, I probably haven't. The washing machine went. Maybe I told you that in last week. So we had to buy a new washing machine. That came straight out of the Florida of money. Um, so given that the money that we're forecast to save is like bang on the nose, that's like 300 quid. Sorry, yeah, 300 quid now I have to find. So badly wanted a washer dryer. So badly, but Darren did his Yorkshireman lecture about how expensive it was to use the dryer and how more things could go wrong with it because it was more complicated and better getting just a simple washing machine. So we've just got a simple washing machine. Um, yes, I know the leading vehicle is driving on, I'm aware. So, yeah, that's what's happening. I'm a bit frustrated. Um, not getting any more help in the regards of taking the kids to Scouts. Have this bloody virus, which is my own fault for telling pork pies. Um, this thing's on Friday night, so Darren will have to take Isaac to it, drop him off, go back for him. And Saturday morning after Jiu Jitsu, uh, there's the rain on. Um, then Isaac's got, they're going to see Wakanda forever, which I really want to see. It's like, ah, shit. Um, also, another thing, there was the annual general meeting for the Scouts a couple of weeks back. <clears throat> it was via Zoom. Well, some people went via Zoom, I was one of them. And, um, they're having real difficulty with leaders so they've like appealed for um, occasional helpers I call it um, so that I can give the volunteer leaders like nights off here and there um, because they're having to like do double jobs as in for beavers and cubs when they're only supposed to be doing one lot so I put my name forward for that and um, it won't be every week because I can't what's the word I can't say I'll do something every week because I never know how I'm going to be week on week but I've put my name, I need to go and have one of those Disclosure Nor oh, Disclosure Northern Ireland um, things done where they make sure you don't have a criminal record and you, you know you can be trusted so I was meant to go in on Friday night to sign up, sign up the forms and stuff but <clears throat> because Isaac won't be going to Scouts because he's going to this 18th thing I won't be able to and I hate, you know, I don't want them to think I've I've volunteered and then I'm not going to do it. I'll just have to go in the following week. <clears throat> but yeah, hopefully I'll manage okay at that. Um, my, my friend Kelly, or if you're watching Kelly, she was a guide leader for many years. So I'll have to bend your ear about what's involved. Why would you cross there, you stupid woman? <clears throat> There's a couple that have just crossed the road. Uh, just at one of the worst places you could cross it where traffic can't see you. And she's walking with two sticks and she's extremely slow. God love her, like, you know, it's not nice to be like that. But there's a zebra crossing 50 metres away. You know what I mean? It's like, just walk up to the zebra crossing. Don't cross in an area of the road where you've held up loads of traffic, for one. And secondly, it's dangerous. Someone won't see you. Oh, God, you know that thing where... Um, 15 minutes it takes me to drive, so as I've just looked at my thing, 15 minutes of waffle. My dad's in bed. Um I've forgotten what I was gonna say. Oh, it's gone. Alright, that's me here. I shall um 
check in with you guys either later in the week or on the way home if there's anything of interest which i can't see i'll speak to you later guys look can't see her now josephine's coming oh dear me oh god where is she i can hear her i can't see her hello darling what are you doing i have to get this big bag out give me a minute we'll get we'll see if there's some dreamies Josephine. are we going to see if there's any dreamies you lead the way Josephine is leading the way. Oh, dear me. Go on, you tell me where to go. She loves one my bag. I'll get the bloody key. earlier than I thought. It's still the same day. I am now on the way down to pick Isaac up from school because he's missed a bus. I'm trying to think what the quickest way is, I think, this way. Um, he has PE on a Tuesday and I think he keeps forgetting to go get his PE gear so he keeps missing the bus. But Tuesday's a good day because it's the day that I'm in town anyway at my mum's so... <coughs> enough for me to pop down and get him. So I had to uh, go to Argos for my mum. <clears throat> we didn't go out because I wouldn't have been up to pushing the wheelchair. My chest is not very good. So I went, her toaster's broken down. <clears throat> I checked the fuse and, and you could tell by looking at it wasn't the fuse. Um, I changed it anyway and it still didn't work. All the wiring was fine. Um, so oh, I had to go get her a new toaster oh, the minute we got the toaster can I have some toast and strawberry jam so she's got her toast and strawberry jam she's happy with that <coughs> um, so yeah I'm now going to collect Isaac from school um, I really could have done with getting an 18th birthday card and a Guinness Book World Records for Callum's birthday but then he might have it um, but yeah, I shall go. Um, I'll put the video on driving up into Isaac's school. We'll see if we can see him standing like a waif on his own with his big bags. Um, Alright, I'll switch off now. I'll switch on just before I drive in. Right, here we go. We're turning into the right here. This bloody camera won't stay still. Wednesday and I am on the sofa with a laptop and two doggies and Christmas jumpers. Um, <clears throat> I don't know why they've taken up residence on my shins. I am trying today to get through some emails. Um, I don't often tackle these because it takes so long and I get really frustrated because people reply <laughs> right away. I've, I've done about eight. And I thought, right, I'm going to show you just so you can see how bad this is, as in how long it takes me to get back to people. So I'm going to, um, I haven't opened Messenger, it's on Facebook, so I'm going to try and let you see what I'm talking about here, guys. Okay, so this is my inbox. Add eight to this. It's not a lot in it at the minute. But what I want you to look at is the time scale after the message as to when it was sent. So 21 minutes ago, that's because I sent a reply to that today and I came straight back. That's Chris, who's exactly the same as me, doesn't, and I can see the first line of that is lack of contact because like me, he doesn't mail much either, which I totally get. Kelly, which I haven't even read yet, I need to read that and it says I've read it, I haven't. One week ago, I'm going to respond to that today, that's priority. 
then you've got one below it of two weeks another one of two weeks one of two weeks that one I, I don't really need to reply to but I can't delete it because I didn't reply last per Hannah 15 weeks ago she emailed me someone I went to school with look at that 36 weeks ago and someone else there 36 weeks ago that's obviously when I last responded to emails so yeah you can see guys how bad I am at responding to emails there I literally have said to Darren I don't understand how people get time <clears throat> and then there's like movie groups that I'm part of that I never contribute to I never talk in them because I don't get time I mean, how are people out there doing full-time jobs able to send all these emails? I mean, not people that only send a few, because there's people that don't email much, like probably Kelly and, and Chris, they don't email loads. But people in the YouTube community email constantly with loads of people. And I'm thinking, how the hell are you working and sending all these emails? Unless they do a job where they're not working all day and they get bored and they've got lots of time spare to send emails. But when I'm at home, um, <coughs> believe it or not, I'm generally quite busy. Um, I rest a lot, fair enough. I don't get up until quite late. But um, I'm either, when Isaac gets in, it's doing homework, it's tidying, it's getting ready for tea. It's, you know, housework. It's helping my mum out with stuff. It's going into my mum's. It's getting shopping. And there's always something that I'm doing. Um, I do not actually sit on my arse all that much. Um, so I haven't done much in the last couple of weeks because I've had this <coughs> I've had this virus and it's not gone yet. I'm really drained. You can probably tell by my face from going out yesterday to my mum's, just that tiny little outing and trip down to Argos. And last night, my legs and knees were so, oh, they were so painful burning. Them. And the dogs are on my bloody legs, which isn't helpful, I have to say. And they're, they've got that nice bed there, look, at the, and they won't get in it. So yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to these emails now. And my screen has got a nice line down the middle. I'll show you that as well. So my laptop's on the way out, which is amazing. So um yeah. See the line down the middle. So if I do this, away it goes. There's obviously something loose in the computer. So I'm gonna respond to these. I'm gonna respond to some of them, as many as I can. I am actually watching a oh, let's see while I'm listening. Um, of that chapter. It's about that woman that locked her boyfriend in his suitcase and he suffocated and died. Oh, I'll tell you what, she reminds me so much of my next, so much of my next door neighbour. <coughs> Not that I'm saying she would lock someone in a suitcase until they died, but she looks a lot. If you put four stone on that woman, she'd look like my neighbour. Right, I'm going to go and get something done, folks. Um, I shall check in with you um, later. Oh, I'll let you see this. You've probably seen it if you're on my face, but if I zoom in enough, can you see Isaac's little school photo over there? His first secondary school photograph. I'll I'll zoom closer um in the week later in the week. I have to remember when I'm next at my mum's to try and find my first year school photograph. Oh my god, guys, it's abysmal. I've got hair like a bird's nest, it's short and fuzzy, I've got a face full of spots, I'm really pale and I look mortified, I looked so embarrassed. I'm going to try and find it so you can see how bad it is when I'm next at my mum's, um, see if she's got it anywhere. Um, but yeah, I'll check in with you guys later in the week. Hello, c'est moi. It is, um, I'm out of breath from going up the stairs, how embarrassing is that? So I'm just about to get washed for bed. It is Friday. I'm just giving you a catch up when you can hear me um, I'm not driving. I did order a microphone for the car. I don't know if it will help, but I've got one. So um, Friday, as it was at Scouts tonight, I'm catching you up on the palaver about the birthday party. So um, I told you about the mother of Isaac's friend Robert inviting us to this party, but giving us no information. And um, I got a text at 25 to 11 the night before the party was the next day to say, oh, my kids won't need a lift to Scouts um, because it's Mia Rose's party. And the exact wording was, if yous can get, it's at seven o'clock. That was it. So I'm thinking, right, I don't know where it is. I, I've literally, I know no information. You're telling me at 25 to 11 the night before. So 
as I still am not well enough to go out to that kind of thing because um, I've just had a warm drink, it helps my throat, but I'm still coughing a lot. It's now going to play up. It's like psychosomatic when I say cough, it makes me think about it, which makes me cough. So I wouldn't have been well enough to go and it, like to sit around a table eating with people. So I said, um, because I think she had asked Isaac just to kind of keep an eye on Robert, to keep him out of her hair. So what I said was, I still have the virus, I'm not well enough. Darren had said to me, okay, so she's invited Isaac. She can really well take him. Um, he says, I'm not driving all the way down to Waterfoot, all the way back, and then all the way back again later in the night to pick him up. Surely they can take him. And I said, she won't offer to take him. He says, well, I'd be really rude if she doesn't. Well, she didn't, because I said I couldn't go because I wasn't well. And I said, I pork pied again. Darren made me. He says, tell her I'm going to pick something up that I bought Isaac for Christmas off like Facebook or something. So we did. I says, we won't have the car. All right. OK, no problem. No offer of, oh, we'll take him. It's fine. Not a problem. Just said, right. OK, not a problem. Um, He didn't go. Um, Then when I had said we weren't going, I says, oh, I hope you have a nice evening. By the way, where is it? I wanted her to know that she hadn't given me any information. It really came across like she asked us because she sort of felt obliged and then she thought better about it and she wished she hadn't. So she didn't talk about it. She never brought it up. She never, you know, said anything in advance. She had texted the scouts early that day to say hers wouldn't be there that night, but she hadn't texted me. She left it to like 25 to 11 at night to say, oh, it's this time if you can come and not even tell us where. And then basically no offer to take Isaac with all of the amounts of places I've taken her son and taken him to scouts every week. So we didn't go and Isaac went to scouts. I think Isaac was a bit peeved, but we're trying to get across to him the actual principle of the thing. Um, and it turns out when I found out where it was, it's a tiny little pub where there's like barely room to swing a cat. And I do not know what a child is going to do there because they have a birthday party tomorrow or Saturday morning um, or Saturday early afternoon. It's one of Isaac's friends' birthday, so they're going to see Wakanda forever. I'm jealous. Um, so that would mean she'd have to give Robert a lift into town. Now, I know she would have expected me to do that. So what I did was when the mum of the boy that's birthday is said, oh, I've got spaces for X money in the car if anyone needs a lift. I went on and said, because I don't need a lift, this is Isaac's in town anyway on Saturday morning, but thanks a lot for the offer. Because I wanted her to know we weren't going to be there to give Robert a lift because I know she would text me last minute on Saturday, can you bring Robert to this party? And it's like, no, I can't because we're at jiu-jitsu. And again, I don't want to tell her he's at jiu-jitsu because if she finds out, she'll make Robert go back. And Robert's the kid that won't do anything, that stands and huffs, that throws himself on the ground and that says they're trying to brainwash me purely because they expect you to do what you're told and they say you need to do this, you need to do that. He doesn't like to be told what to do. He gets away with an awful lot. And I don't want him going to jiu-jitsu with Isaac because it holds Isaac back. He's partnered with him and then he won't do any of the moves, he won't do any of the work and he doesn't progress. So he's just a thorn in Isaac's side. It's horrible to say. Um, I felt really bad for him because he was being bullied at primary school. So, you know, Isaac befriended him and spent a lot of time with him. And the more we've got to know him and his family, it, it's not nice to say, but his attitude leads to the bullying. And his parents, or I should say his mum, just thinks the sun shines out of his arse and she won't put him straight. She won't tell him that you can't speak to people the way he does and you can't boss people the way he does and you can't be condescending and patronising the way he is. And from her respect, she she's tells so many lies and I've found so much. And there's nothing I hate as much as a person that lies. Honestly, I'd rather you insult me to my face than behind my back. Hate it. Um... So yeah, he went to Scouts tonight, they had outdoor cooking and they made Frankenfurters and I can't remember what else he said. So he's got Jiu Jitsu first thing and then this party. So um, yeah, busy lifestyle for Isaac, not so much for us. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go to bed now guys. Um, I'll catch up with you probably tomorrow. This is the view today folks on this windy day. Let me show you some little birds. 
And you see the bird feeder there, the two little birds. We have so many little birds in our garden. They're all living in that ivy. We've got a little fat ball feeder there. And then the little seed feeders there in the corner. So they're enjoying that little fat ball at the minute. Oh, dear me. Such a terrible day. You can't pick up how strong the wind actually is. But it is. Right, let's go and get ourselves some Weetabix for our breakfast. Saturday. Right, let me record that for posterity, but in case nobody believes me. On the fourth attempt, I lit the flipping fire. I'll tell you what's wrong. We don't have any sticks, you know, like kindling. We've just got big logs to put on top. <clears throat> so it kept going out, but it's fucking lit. The bastard's lit, folks. Yay! It just would not light for me. I don't know why. But it's lit now. Happy days. Yes, this is what I'm doing on a Sunday afternoon, folks. Fighting with a bloody fireplace. Put that back at Darren. I'll be so impressed when he comes in and sees that. So, sorry about the light, guys. I've just got, like, the little lamp on here. Because I don't like loads of light. I've got the curtain shut. Because I don't want to be going to the window or to the door. I don't like going to the door when I'm in the house of my own <coughs> because I just I feel a bit nervous about it so I pull the curtain so people can't see me and I put the CC I've got the CCTV on my phone to see who's at the door so if it's someone obviously I know I'll go and answer it but I don't like people can see right into the living room and they know I'm here so I don't like to answer it when I'm in the house of my own very impressed with that fire I can't believe I've actually managed to light it I never had any issues lighting fires previously, but I always need to have sticks. And we don't have, Darren doesn't need sticks to light it. I do, I'm a nightmare. So this morning, Darren took Isaac to Jiu Jitsu. And um, you've probably seen me wearing the same top for like nearly a week because I'm trying not to dirty loads of clothes so that they need washed because the washing machine's not gonna be arriving for like a week and a half. I do have like vests under it, so I change those regular. Yeah, Darren took Isaac to Jiu Jitsu this morning. I had to get a new gi for him, 35 bloody quid. A gi is that the white outfit they wear. Then he had um, one of his friend's birthdays. They're going to see Wakanda Forever, which is two hours, 41 minutes. I don't think any of them will have a clue it's that long. So Darren is on his way home now. He's dropped him at the cinema and the, the boy that's birthdays, it is his mum's going to drop him back after. It saves Darren hanging about in town for that time. I said, go see the film. Go watch it. It's a really good movie, but he, he wasn't interested for some reason. Um, I really want to see it personally, but I didn't want to go out and be coughing around loads of people because this thing's not fully away yet. And, you know, I don't want to be, you know what I mean? I don't want to spread it around little kids that have to go to school. That's what's happening today. The fire has just finally lit. I've been watching four in a bed. I've been watching some YouTube. I don't know what I'm going to watch now. I think Darren's on his way back, so I'll have to. You sort of can't watch just what you want. I was like, oh, I'll go to the cinema, give me an afternoon on my own in the house to just watch shite. I think he's actually back now. Oh. That's half of your reaction to my wonderful fire. It's lit. So I've gone around that shop. That took ages four. No, I, I need sticks because we still don't want a fire just one day. What's that? Oh, cookies. Look, you never you mind the cookies. They're open as well. That's why you're sniffing. No, you're not having the chocolate cookies. Four times it took for me to do that. Chocolate's off springing out next door. What? The trog's offspring out. Is that what the wind is? No, that's due for Get away door. from the cookies. So when I got out of the car, they ran and hid by the windowsill. The kids hid from you? <gasps> by whose windowsill? Her, her front window sat back in from the front door. Right. So when they saw me... They hid? Yeah, backs against the wall. Like I couldn't see them. For what reason? Oof. Right, I'll switch off now. I can open the curtains now, Darren's back. Oh, do you like my tasteful slippers? I feel warmer with the curtains shut for some reason, but I can open them now. Could that dog be any closer to that fire? Apparently yes. Is. Honestly. Be careful, Dobby. 
Perga out there. She loves the fire. Her truly has trying her eyeballs. She'll like. send your whiskers. Dobby. She's not listening. Dobby. You're getting too close to the fire. Yes. You. Hello. It is Sunday, so I'm closing off the weekly vlog without makeup. I always feel the need to apologise. I need to stop apologising for not having makeup on. But I'll tell you what it is. Isaac says, well, why do you care? Because every time I've no makeup on in real life, people say to me, do you feel all right, Lisa? You look really tired or you, you don't look very well or you look a bit peaky or you look as if you've got a lot of sunburn about your face. Would you'll notice my face is quite, it's not actually as bad at the minute. It's quite red when I don't have makeup on because my neck and the rest of me is quite pale. I don't put makeup on to make me brown or I put makeup on to take the redness down. Stop bouncing, Isaac. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I sh I'm going to try going forward not to apologise when I don't have makeup on. I shouldn't. So, yes, what well, is 15 degrees? It is a dry day, which is good. We're going to my mum's. Um, Isaac's got a bit of Irish to learn. I've got my seat warmer on, which is very pleasant. It's just starting to warm up. Um, so, yeah, I'm just closing the vlog. I don't think there's anything to tell you. What was yesterday? Yesterday, Isaac went to see Wakanda Forever and he said it was okay. Most people I know that seen it said it was excellent. It was really good. Um, it was two hours forty one though. I don't think a lot of kids were expecting that. It dragged on way too much. Um, yeah, but you're eleven, I said. You don't want things that are really long. And saying that, the Batman was really long, and he was invested from start to finish of that. That was a really, really good. Um. So yeah, that was yesterday, and then, um, I, we just spent the rest of the day in the house. He wasn't home until like half four, and then he was on his like various things in the evening. Um, God of War's out. It's killing me. I really want it as well. And I'm watching people playing it, and it's like, oh, I'm not watching people playing it because I don't want to see the gameplay. I want it to be a surprise for me when I play it, but I keep seeing the thumbnails, and it's like, oh my god, I want God of War so badly. It's kind of like me, so it's like, oh. So, um, yeah. Um, so, I think that's about it. I'll wait till Darren gets in the car and see if he's got any gems of wisdom for you before I close off. Uh, other than that, I'm on a live stream on Thursday horror hangout which I was in four years ago with Sean, Urshan, Jen and Christian from Gems Reviews from the Graves and Monty, the horror miser from Monty G. So I'm looking forward to that. That should be fun. It's been a long time since we've caught up. I just hope people behave themselves in the comments. So I'm just signing off for the week. Have you any gems of wisdom before I the depart? Man, Anything happened? Been... No no I just this caught, week. Caught the trolleys on the way moving out. That's about it. Oh yeah. <laughs> right me and Darren and they say this about quite a few people in relationships that certain things they're polar opposites and there's one thing we're polar opposites in. Darren is the eternal optimist and I'm the eternal pessimist in that I never will think something good's going to happen until it's actually happened and I've seen it with my own eyes. I think it comes from me just having desperately bad luck in life. Darren sees something that could hint at something maybe good and he'll think oh so yesterday um, Darren said to me, her next door's got the car, the boot open and the back seats of the car are down. What if she's moving out? And I said, yeah, and what if she's taking something to the tip? What if she's like, there's that flipping air freshener again. What if, you know, she's bought a piece of furniture and she's bringing it back to the house? Because we've had the car seats down to pick stuff up lots and we haven't moved out. So um, he has in the back of his little mind like when he saw the electric car charging point being put in, his first thought was, well, she doesn't have an electric well, car. What's she that still like? doesn't have an electric car. That's the electric power point. So he thought, oh, maybe the guy's selling the house. <laughs> so that's what I mean. Darren always looks at the, the good side of things. I don't want to allow myself to do that, to get my, help, my hopes built up and be furiously dashed. If you're watching this and you think we sound horrible, our neighbour is a nasty piece of work. I'm not going to go into anything about her, but if you watch previous vlogs, you would have an idea what kind of person she is. She's, she's not right. She's been moved from various areas um, for her behaviour in the past, and now we've got her next door to us. And it's, it's a trial, let's say. Although now, these days, we just don't speak to one another. When Darren was coming back yesterday from, uh, I think he might, he was either going to the garage or he was, he was coming back with Isaac. The two kids next door actually there's that that radio thing i told you about yeah 
uh, what was I saying? They hid, they were outside and they pushed themselves flat up against the front wall of the house, thinking in any way that that would hide them. So it's like they're actually hiding from him because she has clearly said, do not speak to them next door. So rather than risk Darren saying, you're right, how are you or whatever, not that he wouldn't because he hasn't, um, they, they try to hide and it's just getting to the stage of ridiculousness. Anyway, we're not talking about my neighbour. Darren's just hoping that there may be a tiny sliver of the hope that she may be moving out. I, I don't hope she comes so. and knocks on her door. Don't forget that hope of all hopes. Darren wants to tell her, I have no desire. desire to converse with you in any way, shape or form. Please remove yourself from my property. And he's just got this little line that he wants to use. And I don't think he'll get the chance because she'll not come near us. CCTV will get it and then we can upload it. <laughs> or me shutting the gate behind him. Um, so, no, nothing's happened this week. That's the, the highlight of Darren's week, thinking that there may be potential that she's moving out. Um, but what she, she's she been horrible and we've done nothing to her, but she keeps doing this thing. And I think it's for the benefit of everyone else where she's trying to make out that we're so awful. She runs away, like she was doing something in the back of the car when Darren came back yesterday. And she actually left the whole back of the car up and ran in the house when she saw Darren coming with the dogs. So he was walking the dogs, that son is really annoying. <clears throat> um, and it's like, why are you hiding? Nobody's done anything to you other than asked you to keep your kids in line. That's the only thing we've ever done. Told them that it's not acceptable for them to, for their kids to be making up lies about Isaac and spreading it all around the place. It wasn't good enough and they needed to be told it was wrong and ever since that it's just been not good. Never tell someone else what to do with their kids. Won't stop me, I'm sorry, but if it involves Isaac and someone has done something that's not right, it won't stop us. But um, you just wish other people brought their kids up with the same manners and decency that you brought your kids up with but it doesn't it, it's not the case and it's infuriating as a parent it's really just annoying I'll tell you something that I never told you <coughs> and this is a really well brought up little lad from a really well respected family and I really like this wee lad you maybe heard me talk you maybe didn't but they had to do a presentation at school I've started waffling again this happened I apologize yeah and Isaac did David Bowie. Now Isaac was was the actual what you were told. You had to give a talk on someone you admired or what inspired you, or was it just pick a random celebrity? It was doing biography. So it wasn't someone that inspired you. Well, like, well, then why were you told? Why did you not say why he inspired you? Even though you did. I thought it was pick someone that inspires you yeah, and do a presentation. An inspirational person I thought you talked about. Right, so, one of the little lads in Isaac's class did Bobby Sands. Now, I'm going to tell you who Bobby Sands is because you're probably thinking who. Bobby Sands is an IRA political prisoner who died by starving himself. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to get into politics of Ireland. Some people, some Catholics, I'm Catholic, so I'm not slagging off people that I'm not. And I will include my mum in this. There's people don't actually know anything about him other than he was put in prison, he starved himself to death. So my mum's like, oh, it was awful, blah, blah. And I'm like, do you, do you not know anything about Bobby Sands? So I even looked into it to make sure I was right because I knew he was an IRA prisoner. And long story short, IRA prisoners wanted to be treated differently to the rest of the prison community because they felt they were political prisoners and they felt they should be treated the same as like guys in the army that go and fight people wars. People think he starved himself for Ireland. Right, yeah. They so didn't. People think the cause, now I'm completely behind the cause. I would love to see a united Ireland. I'm not behind the IRA in any way, shape or form or violence of any description. I have no admiration for the IRA or people that stupidly starve themselves to death. Fool them, as, as far as I'm concerned. Or food for me. <clears throat> and I had to explain to my mum, this guy, was involved in the planning of the bombing of something that killed children. Yeah, two babies. Um, he, a he's a terrorist. Furniture shop in Belfast. She didn't know. Oh, did he? She thought because it's sort of like he's almost held up to these lofty heights of 
he's a martyr. He died, yeah, he's a martyr. He died for the cause of Ireland. Now, you have to separate yourself from something you would like to see, United Ireland, I would love to see it, and the way people went about trying to get it. So this little lad, to get back to the story, did Bobby Sands for his inspirational person, and the teacher allowed him to. And I cannot for the life of me understand why the teacher didn't take him to one side and say, you can't do this because this is a terrorist. It's like me standing up and talking about Osama Bin Laden. You know what I mean? I, I cannot get my head around it. Now, the most important part Isaac can't remember. There's a wee lad in their class called Daniel. He's in there because he's got special educational needs. He has an assistant that sits with him all day. At nowadays, school have to take a percentage. I don't understand how it works because it's a grammar school, it's a selective grammar school and it's very hard to get into. So I'm not understanding how that's happened. But anyway, just explaining. Now, most of the kids were either thinking yes because they're little Republicans or they were thinking, I can't believe he's doing this and they kept the trap shut. Daniel, not knowing any better. Well, why does he inspire you? But I'm thinking, oh, I wanna hear this. Isaac can't remember what the boy said. Like, how can you pick for a school? Yeah, far on the wrong side of the road. How can you pick for a person that inspires you, an IRA for I mean, the mind boggles, it really does. <clears throat> I was really shocked by that, and I was quite shocked that the teacher allowed him to do it and didn't tell him that it was inappropriate, or didn't at least challenge him when he did it to, to explain why he inspired him and how he felt. You know, if I were in that class, I'd be like, how do you feel about the fact that he was responsible for the death of two babies? There is the possibility, though. All he's been taught is like him on you. Yeah, but he had to he had to research him he for the project. Yeah, but he, he won't have said though. He may have only been given a certain amount of literature on him. There is books out on him that are pro him. He's got he's got Google. Well he'll know. Anybody that and I was just really shocked by it and a little bit offended by it, I have to say. People say, Oh snowflake generation offended on other people's behalf. Oh, is that a cat? No, I think that's a pheasant. It was a tabby cat, but um, there's something dead on the road. But he wasn't attacking soldiers, they literally placed a bomb outside a furniture showroom. Even if he was attacking soldiers, I'd yeah, still... but there's, there's still there's, a, there's another it's bad to attack soldiers, yeah, it's worse to involve <laughs> children, yeah, and again, yeah. two babies, yeah. But it, it just boggles my mind, and this this is on both sides of the of the division over here. People tend to know the pro side about what they support, but they don't know the other side. I'm just all about peace and wanting people to get along with each other, and that's it. But yeah, I thought that was quite. I thought I'd share that with you. We are going to pass this photo in a minute. Just by the takeaway. It's up again. I dare say it will be. Did you have a ticket there? Oh, it's a horse. I see. You won't have seen that. There's a really nice horse to the side of the road there. Um, in Palomina, I've explained this before as well, that ah, I'm going to flip it do away with it. There's different areas that are very Catholic and very Protestant. And people, people mark their territory. I'm going down a hill, that's why that's happening. People mark their territory by putting up flags, or flags, Next. as they call them in Belfast. Sure. Um, so you get in, there's only one area of Balamina I'm aware that does the tricolour because it's, it's predominantly a sort of unionist British sort of town. Um, and most areas put up the Union Jack, I've seen the Scottish flag, the English flag, Israeli the Northern flag, Irish. Palestinian yeah, flag. they get in yeah. on the Israeli Palestinian side of things too. But um, this area that we're going to drive past, I, I haven't seen them up. I'll turn you around if I think it's there. Um, as well as the tricolours, they actually, at, on the anniversary every year, they put up black flags, like a respect thing, and pictures of the hunger strikers. Can't, I just, I don't agree best, with it. You're missing the most important part. And it's obviously the Chinese takeaway. Yes. Darren finds that hilarious. We'll put the hunger strikers up outside the Chinese. This take you piss out of But, yeah. I didn't, I meant just to close the vlog off. I didn't mean to be doing all this talking, guys. I am sorry, but... That just occurred to me as I was driving and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll tell you and you tell me what you think of it's that. The Bobby Sands Celebrity Takeaway. <laughs> but, yeah. Anybody that supports someone that uses violence and kills people to achieve their political aim, 
has no brain as far as I'm concerned. And I don't, I make no apologies for that. I mean, oh, no, they're not all. No, um, I don't, I think it's August actually is the anniversary. My dad will know. Um, there's no tricolours either. There's nothing. There's no flags. I'm feeling quite picky, Scott. No flags. Look at that. That's that dog I told you about. Yeah, big dog. Big dog. Um, forgot what I was saying. Yeah, um, people say, oh, you know, you have to. People have different viewpoints. You have to. Wait. She's talking to herself. You have to accept different viewpoints and understand different people's viewpoints. And for the most part, I agree when it comes to politics and stuff like that. People feel differently. But see, when it comes to anybody that supports violent actions to achieve anything, you're brain dead, as far as I'm concerned. Was well, Keith Richards quoted, deficient in brain? Deficient in brain. Again, you know, there, there's certain exceptions. And Me? No. The Hitler situation, something needed to be done. Armies needed to be sent in to put a stop to that. It's just unfortunate that a lot of it, people lost their life in you know what I mean? Somebody needs to go in and do something to put in. Somebody needs to take that man out. But other than that sort of situation, I mean, you've got a dictator that's evil. I don't believe in war. I don't think war solves anything. I think there's always a solution other than that. Um, but anyway, let's not get into that. I was just quite disgusted by a child of 11 saying that he admired Bobby Sands. And not even just that, a child that's very intelligent, that's at a grammar school, and that is actually a nice <laughs> yeah, He's one of my favourite ones, is. I don't like what yeah. he says, isn't he? No, but yeah, I've always liked him. Um, I would just love to have asked him a few questions. I would also love to have said to him, you do know that this man killed two babies. Do you think it's right to do that, to <clears> get what you want? Because it's important that young people understand stuff like that. It's important that they have the whole picture. A lot of people don't actually realise that the IRA originally was started as a political party of mostly farmers. It's what happened um, when occupation happened, the, the, it was the English, I'm not going to say the British, but it wasn't the British, it was the English came in and basically just took what they wanted. Threw people out of their farms, there was the famine, um, anything they could grow had to be sent to English landowners. People starved and died, there was no support. The English landowners took the Irish people's farms and chucked them out. So obviously there there was quite a mood of, how dare you? These farmers got together um, as a political organisation to discuss what they were going to do to save... That's Brian Davidson's ex-wife, Sinead. Um, sorry, I, I, I just had to... I don't think Brian had ever seen her before. She looks about 65. Um, I don't think she's that much different in age to me. You're joking. No. Um, maybe a couple of years. She may be about your age. What was I well, saying? I'm depressed. Yeah, so that's what it was formed for. Initially, I was in full agreement of why it was formed, and they wanted to try and get their land back and get these people out of their land and be able to feed their families. But as is generally the case, There's usually a contingent of people that aren't happy with common sense, um, you know, that what that turned it into a physical thing rather than, you know, a protest and thing, you know, that's, and that's how the IRA were formed. So initially it wasn't a bad thing, but other people got involved and it became a bad thing. It's like any accumulation of human beings. Once you get to a certain amount, you're going to get a certain percentage. Yeah. Like on YouTube that I just put in class. I'm going to park up here. Um, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll drive in. You're driving um, in, darling. I'm not going to reverse it. Is this... Oh! Let's see, two seagulls. Oh, shit, I had a bit of a script. That was the curb I just drove into looking at two seagulls. Yeah, crawls looking at you. It's like, what are you doing? Look, it's got a mouthful of something. What's that? It's bread. Um, so, oh. thank you for watching and thank you for listening to me oh, whinge. Look at that lovely little black bird. What Fight milk! Birds? What are those birds? Huh? Fight milk. Power of the crow. Fight milk. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, sunny, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right, so we're going. Thank you for listening to me complain. Um I shall be back. This is the loveliest little blackbird. I'm gonna try and fill them. What's that for? I have no idea. Right. Um I'll try and fill them this blackbird. No, don't open the doors, I wanna fill them the bird. Right, I missed the little blackbird. It flew away. There's the crow that was walking funny a minute ago. Look at him. Look at him. Isn't he cute?
I'll give you a photograph. Look at the size of that crow, folks. Isn't that awesome? I wanted to get the little blackbird who was just down here, but he went away. So, do you want to sign off for the week for me? No. Do you want to sign off for the week for me? Is that a big crow on the roof up there? Or is it something in the background? I haven't got my glasses on. It's a chimney thing, I think. I don't know. Chimney crow. I've got blind eyes. Right, do you want to sign off for me? I best not. Fight milk! Can you hear all the birds? Them trees are full of them. Three little ones up there. I can't always oh, Can you hurry up, please? So I can lock the door. Why do children never move fast? Because they don't want to. Another birdie. There's birds everywhere. Oh, I've no. got the phone out in case Josephine's here so we can sign off with Josephine. Cheers, we're thinking. Look, we've, we've had enough already. Where are the borders? We need. Is she there? Alright, signing off, folks. There's no Josephine today. Um, I will catch up with you next week. Thank you for watching.